everyone welcome to news click the conviction of rahul gandhi congress leader and mp in a surat court for defamation has led to his disqualification from uh, parliament and that means that there is a chance that he will not be able to contest the 2024 lok sabha election and for a few years thereafter today in our studio uh, joining us is apar gupta he's a lawyer he's with the he's the executive director of the internet freedom foundation and we are going to discuss what the problems with the defamation law are is a civil defamation law a more benign sort of animal compared to the criminal defamation and also is the ruling in the rahul gandhi case as much political as it is legal Apart, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Apart, let's begin with like the most important thing that people are talking about right now. They think that this ruling by the Surat Magistrates Court is a blow against Indian democracy. Yes. But it's the ruling of a court. Can you tell us why this concern is arising? I think you mentioned this too. Yes. That uh, it's not good for democracy. Yes. So the basis of my re- reading has been that uh, let's look at the law which is being used. uh to convict rahul gandhi who's a member of the indian opposition member of the lok sabha and the effect it's had in terms of his disqualification from the lok sabha and of course that is one way we can look at the eventual outcome it has resulted in at a point in time where there is a majority for the bhartiya janata party and what it portends and what is the reading much more politically but i won't do this what i would like to do is just concentrate on the nature of the case and the law which has been used to show that this is a rare instance and a outlier and whether they should invite our critical reasoning towards it as to how this was possible right how was it possible so firstly to start thinking about this i would first look at the statement which has been made itself which is the basis of the complaint of criminal defamation and the law of criminal defamation is contained under sections 499 of the indian penal code which defines the offense of criminal defamation and section 500 which then contains the punishment for criminal defamation the process for criminal defamation as a complaint case one which is not investigated by the police right even though it's a criminal case is done by a criminal court as per section 199 of the code of criminal procedure okay under this the statement which is alleged to be defamatory has to be adduced before a magistrate and the person who is complaining which is the complainant has to show that this statement lowered their reputation harmed their reputation in the eyes of a third person okay the definition of uh defamation also under section 499 contains within except explanation 2 an explanation 2 basically says that when a statement is made against a not a person but a association a registered body or a class of persons then it still may be defamation for a person who is a part of these now what is the statement the statement made by rahul gandhi has been after he takes the names of certain individuals who are fugitive absconders right. accused of um, enriching and taking uh, uh, loans etc fleeing this country he calls them thieves then he refers to the prime minister and subsequently he says what is uh, which is a rhetorical statement on its very basis is that in the context of thievery are all people carrying a certain surname also thieves is in this a peculiar circumstance i'm not trying to add words here i'm just saying what is the ordinary impression a person would take away from that and that surname happens to be modi now a person who is a politician a member of the bhartiya janata party in gujarat files a complaint before a court in surat and alleges that because my surname is also modi Mm-hmm. i have been defamed by this statement right the first question which should be put is that does that statement by itself signify or lower the reputation of a of a person who carries the last name which is modi right because it's not a specific statement against that complainant 
who's filed this case in Surat. Right. And this kind of statement, essentially, which refers to a person's last name, my last name is Gupta, and if says all Guptas are thieves, I do not think that a person would start thinking that they have called me a thief, right, in that sense. Which is why the law also provides that there needs to be a definite classification or a, a, a specificity to the defamatory statement when it applies to a class of people. It cannot be indeterminate. It okay. cannot be fairly broad. And that's why last names, if somebody just refers to it in the company of another person, if there are 10 people present there, and one of them happens to be happen the, have the last name Modi or Gupta, and they say that, well, uh, all Guptas are thieves and looks at that person or etc. Modi then that means that they are pointing and lowering my reputation in front of the nine other people. Right. And this is important for us to consider because we need to assess the very basis of that conviction. Right. The basis of that conviction is a defamatory statement which lowers a person's reputation before the eyes of a third party. And I do not think so this emerges when any person's last name is referred when they are not physically present, they are not even in that same state or election rally and they are not even, uh, they just carry that last name. And uh, if I've read the uh, case properly, they have, uh, they also have a middle and a first name. Right. So, so you're saying that the case itself is based on the ruling of the magistrate court is based on a very shaky foundation. So why is it still harmful for democracy? Is it that the law of defamation itself, criminal defamation uh, specifically, is harmful for democracy? So one, when one looks at criminal defamation, one needs to understand that this is a law which is brought in at a point in time in the common law jurisdictions when Britain was a colonial power. It was brought in because at that point in time, certain kinds of statements which were made were considered to be an attack against a colonial form of state, which is not consistent with a constitutional republic. This is the very reason why the Kenyan High Court in 2017 held that criminal defamation is unconstitutional. Right. This is the very uh, reason why Several countries all over the world have repealed or have placed criminal defamation to be an inoperative law. This is the very reason why the Supreme Court stated the operation of sedition as well, which is contained within that same enactment, which is the Indian Penal Code. And when one looks at the operation of the criminal defamation law, and one looks at the constitutional judgment which upheld its uh, uh, validity, uh, which was a judgment by Justice Deepak Mishra called Supramanyam Swami. Right. If you look at all the petitioners in that, the petitioners are principally politicians. They are politicians alleging that criminal defamation cases have been filed against them by other politicians or its right. journalists or its activists. Hence, the offense of criminal defamation is not today serving the ordinary Indian. It is not something a person takes recourse to because in any instance, they are not hoping for a, a person who defames them to be convicted. Given that access to a lawyer, attending court proceedings, leading your evidence and re uh, is a very high price to pay for uh, then repairing your reputation. It is essentially used by the most powerful people in society, usually corporate groups or politicians against others. Against right? each other as well. Against each other as well. And I think what comes through this is should be an understanding that the law of criminal defamation is essentially being used to starve public conversation in a sense. And I'm not saying that you do not need a well-balanced civil remedy to repair reputations. But the question is, is that happening? No, but wait, uh, Apar. I mean, I also have a question. Is the civil law on defamation going to be something which is benign, even if that law is developed and the criminal law is not there? Does it make everything okay? So the civil law of uh, defamation today in India exists as what is called as a uh, uh, common law. Uh, it has a case by case development and uh, usually claims which are filed are filed uh, uh, by people uh, claiming a large amount of damages. 
okay. usually in courts and jurisdictions which are inconvenient to the defendant. Thereby, they have to incur a cost in the participation of the proceeding itself. What this means is that the civil law also is prone to abuse. And this is because the legislature has never acted, defined it and legislated around it. I believe that a private member's bill in which I had also participated in the drafting process, which is called the Protection of Speech and Reputation Bill, which was filed as a private member's bill by Member of Parliament Tathagat Satpati is one such model which exists in which the jurisdiction where the case can be filed is better defined, where there is a cap on damages and beyond monetary damages, what a person requires quite often is for their reputation to be repaired. And to repair their reputation, money is not the only thing which can result in that. I think what is much more important is for a similar statement, especially if it is co uh, caused by a article or something which is a audiovisual format, needs to be as prominently displayed in order to repair their reputation in a way. I, I think what we are lacking today is the is is an understanding of the law for the very nature and the purpose for what is built. Defamation but, in law is meant to repair reputations. It is not meant to settle scores or personal vendettas. But you're saying that it, this kind of a restitution, which is uh, sort of less aggressive, less likely to send you into bankruptcy or into jail, would not apply in the Rahul Gandhi case in any case because you're saying that that doesn't sound like defamation at all. No, at the very foundation, at its very root, it seems the statement is a rhetorical statement. The president of the Supreme Court interpreting explanation 2 to section 499 clearly says if you say that all lawyers are thieves, it does not mean that one lawyer can go and file a case because they think their reputation has been lowered. Uh, so, I would say that the case by itself seems very, very strange. I have read a translated, not a authenticatedly translated, but a machine translated version of that judgment. And I'd like to also focus on the punishment which has been given, which is there for two years. Here, there are about four or five pages of reasoning. And in fact, the court is holding that the two years of punishment are in fact awarded because the accused happens to be a member of parliament and hence needs to be more responsible. An example needs to be set for society. And this is a, at best an, an incorrect assessment, an indirect statement. It would apply as per the complainant's own statement to all people who hold the last name Modi. Right? Mm -hmm. So why would this uh, severe punishment be given, given that its link with the complainant is so remote? Nobody in the ordinary mind would think just because Rahul Gandhi has said that all people, that too in an election rally or in a public speech that some person has a last name which is Modi, that all Modis are, uh, uh, are actually thieves. I, 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 right. I really don't think so. Whether So firstly, the basis of the uh, conviction in terms of the reasoning is bad. Secondly, the g giving the maximum threshold of punishment of two years imprisonment seems to be something which is completely disproportionate. In its very nature, this came, case seems very, very peculiar to me because usually criminal defamation cases do not result in convictions. They result in frequent adjournments, actually. There is the, the objective is to drain out energy, resources, time, money from the person who has made the defamatory statement in order to extract an apology out of them and lead them to a sense of exhaustion. Why then in the Subramanian Swami case, was it not possible to actually get this law uh, revised or struck down? And what's the way out? Uh, that's my final question. So I think in the Subramanian Swami case, as it was being heard at that time before Justice Deepak Mishra and Pant, uh, there was wonderful constitutional advocacy which was done uh, by a lot of senior advocates and I was, uh, I, I happened to assist one of them um, in a petition which was filed for the Foundation for Media Professionals. I think the constitutional arguments at that point in time uh, clearly indicated that uh, the offense of criminal defamation is incompatible with uh, Article 19.1a which guarantees us our freedom of speech and expression and does not constitute a reasonable restriction. 
Now, reasonable restrictions are the grounds under which your fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression can be restricted. Right. And they do mention defamation, right. in fact, expressly. Right. But the important word here is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Right. And here, what was reasoned by the court was that people have a right to reputation. And this right to be reputation needs to be balanced with the fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression. So the court did not look at criminal defamation from the prism of you have a right to freedom of speech and expression. And the exception to that is a reasonable restriction called uh, defamation. They set up a competing right, which is the right to reputation. The exception in a sense became... Became an independent norm. right by itself in the sense. Mm -hmm. And... I, I, I think the court made a very, very grievous error at that point in time. The way forward is for uh, a kind of a larger awakening that the structural risks which defamation poses uh, to ordinary people, to journalists, to politicians, to civic activists. And um, the effect today is very, very evident today with what has happened in the Rahul Gandhi case. But this is a risk which has been continuing for a long period of time. I believe that uh, given where we are today, this realization should seep in a little bit deeper. The people who do obtain majorities in uh, state assemblies and in parliament need to realize that they need to work towards legislative reform on defamation. And their own self-interest may be served over a larger period of time also because they may be put to accountability by journalists and other politicians and right. they cannot resort to criminal defamation but also when they are in opposition because right. that is the very nature of Indian democracy if we still believe in it. Right Appar, thanks very much for joining us with that update. And that's all we have. Thank you very much for joining us and do follow us on our social media channels. Thank you for watching.